Hello everyone. Hi, I'm Puneet Mathur, the Madai guy. I'm a third year computer engineering undergrad from NSID University of Delhi. I'm a machine learning enthusiast and I've done a lot of projects in AI and ML. You can find all of my projects on my GitHub profile www.github.com slash pmathur 5k10. You can also check out my LinkedIn profile that is Puneet Mathur or you can tweet to me on my Twitter handle at the rate the Madai guy. A shout out to all the great ML YouTubers out there like Sarah Trival, Sendex and various others. Thanks guys. Thanks for getting me started into this. So what are we going to do today? Today I've written a Python script which classifies a movie as watchable or not watchable depending on its reviews taken from IMDb website. It uses random forests and decision trees to do so. So what are random forests? Basically, Random Forest is a highly versatile ML algorithm that is used for various applications like marketing, predicting customer behavior, and predicting diseases. It is capable of both regression and classification. Basically, it is based on the principle of ensemble learning. Ensemble learning is a divide and conquer strategy where a group of weak learners come together to form a strong learner. Let me show you a PDF of the same. So here is an image denoting the ensemble learning. As you can see, this is a graph of temperature with respect to the ozone density. As you can see, the data set is quite varied. We have used multiple ensembles such as these gray lines to predict the temperature as a function of ozone. This red line is basic ensemble or the strong learner which has been taken from a set of weak learners. A decision tree is composed of a series of decisions that can be used to classify an observation in a data set. As you can see over here, this is a decision tree which predicts whether it is a good day to play a game or not. It takes in various decision variables such as the outlook, humidity, windy. Depending on each of these factors, it gives a prediction or possibility whether it is safe to play or not. The cumulative or the average vote of each node is then output at the root node, which denotes whether it's a safe day to play or not. A random forest creates a bunch of decision trees. Each decision tree makes a prediction, and the average vote of each of these trees moves up the node to give the final output. As you can see in this image, this is a complete random forest which consists of multiple decision trees. Each of these decision trees gives back an output which is averaged out by this random forest to give the final result. So basically what are the advantages and disadvantages of using random forests? For once, random forests are very, very fast. They even work very well with unbalanced and sparse data. And hence, it is often said that when you don't know which ML algorithm to use, use the random forest as they can do both classification as well as regression. Obviously, they also have their own disadvantages. The main disadvantage that they suffer is that they are prone to overfitting. So let's get started with our Python script. We have nine dependencies installed in order to get the script run. The first one is OS. The OS library is an operating system command line instruction library, which helps us in dealing with the file system. Next, we have the uh, sklearn.featureextraction.txt library, which gives us the count vectorizer. Next, we get the random forest classifier from sklearn.ensemble. Then we have the re library. The read library is used for string manipulation, for concatenating strings, splitting strings, and so on. Then we have the beautiful soup library from BS4. Beautiful soup library is very important when we are passing web data. Web data is, will obviously have some HTML tags, which we do not want in uh, our training data or testing data. Hence, we remove it using beautiful soup. 
Then we have the NLTK library. This is a natural language processing library in Python, which helps in doing all the NLP work. From this NLTK, we import stop words. Stop words are those useless words which have no use in our analytics of text data. Words like is, and, the do not add to any sentiment value and cannot be used for classification as such. Hence, it's best to remove these words from our data set. Then we have the pandas, which is used for CSV files. And lastly, the very important NumPy. NumPy is our one-stop destination for all the scientific calculations. Very useful and heavily downloaded library. So our first step in this script is to fetch the data. We have used the Kaggle dataset to uh, extract the IMDB review. So here, as you can see, we have used the OS library path.name method of OS library to get to the path destination. Our data is saved in TSV format. There are various formats in which our data can be saved. It can be CSV that is comma separated values or TSV that is tab separated values. Here we are using TSV files and hence the delimiter has been set to slash t which denotes the tab. We are using the read underscore CSV format of method of pandas library to get our data and store it in train and test variables. The next part is cleaning the data. We have initialized a list clean underscore train underscore review and we are using a for loop to process each of the reviews by the ID. We have written a function review underscore two underscore word hist to clean this uh, data and then append all the subsequent data into our list. Let us see what this method review underscore two underscore word list does. Over here, this method does basically four things. First thing is removing the HTML by using the beautiful soup. Second is removing the non-letter characters by using the sub method of vLibrary. Then splitting the data and converting it all into lowercase is done using dot lower dot split method. Basically, our data may be in uh, uppercase or lowercase. For example, love may start with capital L or small l, but we would like to classify this as the same word. Hence, we wish to convert it into lowercase for some standardization. Then we use stop words to remove the useless words from our data. We have created a set of all the English stop words and then uh, initialized a for loop which checks if the word is there in stop words or not. If the word of our data set is found to be present in the stop word set, it is not taken in consideration. Finally, the cleaned and paused text is returned as a list. Our next step is to create a bag of words that is called a vectorizer. We use the count, we initial, first initialize the count vectorizer by the variable vectorizer and use the method fit underscore transform to uh, train the vectorizer. The next step is training the data. For this, we first initialize the random forest classifier. Then we use the fit method of forest to feed all our training data into this random forest. We do similar things for the test data also. We have created a new list clean underscore test underscore data and then used a for loop so as to clean each and every review and then finally append it to the list. Next, we have created another vectorizer for the test data, initialized it and uh, fit transformed it and finally converted it into an array. Lastly, to predict the data by using the predict method of forest. We have written forest.predict and fed in the test data, which will finally give us the predictions which will be saved in the variable result. Finally, now that we have our result, we would like to use pandas.dataframe to save it in the format ID and sentiment result. 
and finally convert it into CSV format and save it to a CSV file. So that's it. We have created our script and now we'll see how it works. So here is our labeled train data.tsv file, which consists of all our training data. As you can see over here, it's a TSV file that is a tab separated file with ID and sentiment review. You can see the ID over here, 5814 underscore 8, which corresponds to a specific ID of that review and the subsequent review. After running the script, we get the result in the CSV format, which is over here. Each ID along with its sentiment score, 1 or 0. 1 denotes that this movie is highly recommended. 0 denotes that this movie is not recommended by the users. So this is how we have written a small script to classify movies as good or bad, depending on user review. Thank you guys. Thanks for watching this. Hasta luego. Goodbye.